Formula E's driver market has been very rowdy during the COVID-19 pandemic and today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest moves that has recently happened in the driver market. It was announced that for the 2021 season, Sam Bird would be vacating his seat at Envision Virgin Racing for a seat at Jaguar alongside Mitch Evans, replacing James Collado. This left an empty seat at Virgin alongside Robin Frines, and this seat uh, announced a couple of days ago, will now be filled by New Zealander Nick Cassidy. Now, unless you know stuff about Japanese motorsport, you may not know who Cassidy is. Well, it's a good thing that you landed here, allow me to explain. Like most Kiwi drivers that make it out of their homeland, Nick Cassidy is quick. He got into the nitty gritty of his car racing career in 2008 after racing carts and midgets from the ages of 6 and 8 respectively. He hit the ground running winning that year's Formula 1st Manfield Winter Series, winning the championship after taking 3 wins and 9 podiums out of the 12 races that season. He would then place second in the 2008-9 Formula First New Zealand Championship. From there, he would participate in various open wheel and midget series over the next few years, with the next significant move in his racing career being a second place in the Toyota Racing Series in 2011. It is also interesting to note that that same year he participated in the ADAC Formal Masters Championship, the Australian Formula Ford Championship, the Formula Abarth European Series, as well as, now, as what was then the V8 Supercars Series. In 2012, he'd take the championship title in the Toyota Racing Series as well as the Endurance Series in the inaugural V8 Super Tourer Series, which is basically supercars but in New Zealand. 2013 would see Cassidy defend his Toyota Racing Series title and he'd also get a run in FIA Formula 3. 2015 would see the beginning of his career in Japan, participating in that year's Suzuka 1000 in the Team Up Garage Toyota GT86. He would finish 21st. He'd also win the Japanese Formula 3 Championship that same year. In 2016, Cassidy would finish 4th in the European Formula 3 Championship, but would also finally get his first full run in Super GT, finishing 5th in the standings that year in the number 36 Tom's Lexus. In 2017, Cassidy would take the Super GT title with now the Keeper Tom's uh, team, and he'd also spend his first full season in Super Formula, which for those of you who don't know is basically Japan's IndyCar slash F2. And the cars can occasionally rival 2014 car, uh, F1 cars in terms of pace. It is also interesting to note that not only does Super Formula sometimes act as a uh, stepping stone into Formula 1, many drivers have also built racing careers simply ra uh, around racing in that series. That year he'd finished 10th in the standings with Kondo Racing. 2018 would see another Super GT and Super Formula run in which he'd finish second in both and in 2019 he'd finish second in Super GT again and would take out the Super Formula title. Now that is an astounding junior career. By this point people were actually beginning to consider if Cassidy was actually Formula 1 material. It wouldn't be the first time somebody moved out of Super Formula into Formula 1. Pierre Gasly was actually the last drive to do so. But while I and many other people believe that Cassie is probably worthy of F1, realistically, it's unlikely he'll ever land a drive in the series. Sometimes, no matter how good your road to Formula 1 actually is, results-wise, it can just kind of lead to a dead end, as it seemingly did for Nick De Vries and actually did for Davide Valsecchi. Sometimes, you just kind of have to be in the right place at the right time, and if his primary goal was Formula 1, Cassidy's unfortunately never really been in the right place and it's unlikely he'll ever get a ride simply due to the amount of people in Formula 2 waiting in the wings. There are plenty of alternatives for talented racing drivers however, such as the NTT IndyCar Series, the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, the World Endurance Championship and, as of late, Formula E. Cassidy has been able to nab one of the most competitive drives in the series and god help everyone in Formula E when he gets that car figured out. Expect Cassidy to be at the front as he blitz pretty much everyone in this year's Formula E rookie test at Marrakesh, setting a time that was actually faster than that year's race poll time, and one of, if not one of the fastest laps a Formula E car's ever set round that track. 
Anyway, how do you think Cassidy will do next year slash this year in Formula E? Is he the right choice or would you have chosen somewhere else, someone else for Envi Envision Virgin Racing? Put all of that in the comments below. I do actually read them all, so you may as well say something and I will most likely respond to you. All the socials are in the description below, including the T-Star Instagram, Twitter, and Discord server, as well as my own personal Twitter. Please go check those links out if you haven't already done so. Anyway, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.